All right, guys, welcome back to the Buck Fever podcast. I'm Noah, that's Jake, and we've got Colby and Eli on the laptop here. They're joining us virtually from their respective households. Um, and I had to make sure to, to introduce the podcast and everyone um, because I tried to start the podcast like five minutes ago and Colby got mad at me because I didn't introduce everything. So, um, sorry, Colby, uh, we, we got it, we got it fixed now. Um, but yeah, so we're good <laughs> as you can tell by, by Colby's background, maybe, um, we're kind of starting to focus on turkey hunting a little bit. Um, uh, it's still a little bit early. Um, I couldn't tell you for sure what day it is, but I think we're still in March. Yep. Um, but <clears throat> April's, April's gotta be close Saturday. And so then we're going to be, um, we're going to be coming up in just a couple of weeks. The youth hunt's probably right around the corner. I don't know if either of you guys are taking the kiddos out for that. I'm trying to sneak out there with Ty. A bit limited with the uh, AAU basketball schedule, but I think I think we might be able to get out there and chase a couple thunder chickens around. Gotcha. What about you, Colby? For me, I yeah, kid. A little too, a little too young yet. Eight and six, they're not quite ready to handle the gun on their own. So, gotcha. All right. Well, yeah. Week two, week two will be at the end of April. I think that's for all of us, right? We're all going to be week two. That's going to be our start. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that could be a. Have to, have to be some good competition or side bets going on for that week to, to see who can lay the first one down, the biggest down, who who carries a skunk, you know, <laughs> what happens this weekend. Well, I, I, fortunately, during week two, there's no bonus takes, so we can't do who lays the most down. <laughs> Jake and I will be happy with anybody laying any down because <laughs> we have never killed one first period, second period. You killed them youth hunt and after, right? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, we we suck first and second period, so I well, I don't know, but I could have annihilated a Jake last year. It might have been a Tom. Well, yeah, it but was like I could, five steps from us, and it, I could shoot a crane every day too. But that's not. I what think we're it, going after. <laughs> I mean, I think it was a Tom. I don't know. It it might have been, it might have been some sort of demented Tom. But either way, yeah, we, you could have crushed him. But still, we we just don't really do that well during the first couple periods, which I guess is our first kind of debacle. But Too many hens, that's why. Yeah. What about you guys? Either way, there's bound to be some good debacle stories with all four of us in the in the woods on the same weekend, and that's kind of the theme of tonight, isn't it? We're going to talk about all of our awesome failures and blunders and blunders that come along with turkey season that go definitely go hand in hand we got a laundry list of those yep i i mean i have to say that there have not been near as many in the past few years for us colby but we we sure did, surely started our turkey careers off hot with the debacles <laughs> <laughs> That's almost like the best part yeah. of turkey hunting because I feel like it's a little bit lower stakes than deer hunting because I, I, like, if I mess something up with a big buck, I would be really, really upset. But if you mess something up with a turkey, it's kind of like, ah, we'll just laugh about it. Pretty much. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, it's just expected, and it's just, you just laugh it off, and you're like, yep, another one for the for the list of debacles, and it's just... It's almost it's funny that it happens, and, and you just enjoy those laughs. Uh, yeah, deer hunting would probably be a different story. We'd be uh, a little pissed off or whatnot. But turkeys, it's always laugh it off, shrug it off, and tell stories and jokes about it for years to come. So, Still talking about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Eli, I think you've got a, a list that you and Colby have kind of come up with of memorable debacles that you may have had. So I don't know if you want to kick it off with one here. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, I I didn't start bow hunting until I was in college, and it 
it's the same story for turkeys. The first time I ever went turkey hunting was uh, with Pat, and we ended up going up up to his cabin. Um, between the two of us, we had one slate call, and we were up there with with our buddy Brad. Um, Brad and Mike, I think. Was it Brad and Mike? Yeah, I can't. I can't remember it. That, that part's fuzzy, but what is clear to me is that we were set up in the back and we had a, a hummer of a north wind coming in at us. So we decided, hey, let's move the blind into the pipeline, get a little shelter from the wind, and see what kind of damage we can do, you know, to that rack of lattes that that we're sitting in the cabin. So midday, we decided to pack her up. We'll set up in the pipeline. We'll walk back to the cabin, grab some refreshments, go back out while we're sitting there for a while, and we go, oh, we forgot the call. Like, you got the call? No. You have the call? No, I don't have the call. <laughs> well, we don't have a call. And we remembered that when we were packing the blind up that one of us had set the call down on a rock that was kind of right next to where the blind was set up. So there we are, you know, call this and we decided, well, we probably, probably should go get the call. We walk back out there and we get about 60, 70 yards from the edge of the woods. And it's spring. So you can see, see through it pretty well. And, Joe, 20 yards in front of where the blind was set up, there's a Tom in full strut. <laughs> He's 20 yards away from the so call. There we are. We're still 60 yards away the edge of the field, so 80 yards away from the bird, and the call is laying up on the rock. So where the blind should be, 20 yards away from the top. So... so most people would say, huh, oh, chalk it up, chalk it up to a loss, you know, but uh, we're in the middle of of Clark County, and it's kind of swampy in, in the woods, and I decide that I'm going to army crawl through the muck, <laughs> try to get a shot at the bird, <laughs> so I did. I army crawled right through all the mud, water, puddles get to the edge, things like 70 yards out. I'm so ticked off. And now, and now if I recall, you got to the edge and you got to the call. Now the birds work, worked themselves away 60, 70 yards, but I'm, I'm sitting back watching this all. I'm like, all right, at least there's a chance you might be able to call it back in. And you pick up the slate, and because of all the dew and wetness yeah. from the morning that it's sitting on the rock, the slate doesn't work. Because it's <laughs> Yep. Still no call. Still no call. So, logical thing to do is put the bead about eight inches above the thing's head and let one fly, see what happens. <laughs> Ran away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 70 yard folks don't work too well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, yep. uh, yep. I just shot my gun on uh sunday shot it out to 50 yards and i i think i could kill a bird at 50 maybe 55 but 70 seems like that would be <laughs> maybe a little bit beyond my range with uh with just the bead no. i did it was a six story but in, in one year i did kill two birds and both of them were beyond 55 yards not 70 but they were like in the 55 60 yard range and i dropped them both wow Jeez. in the same year just gotta learn to do that with the deer rifle <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> oh man so how did the rest of the day go then that's just she's over you, you take a long shot and you call it good I don't, I don't recall 
And I think we ended up going back, getting the blind and moving it to the, to the field edge. And uh, I, I can't recall whether or not we ended up getting one that season or not, but probably not knowing, knowing us in, in our early stages of, of Turkey. <laughs> it was a definite tag soup year. Mm. Yeah, that was that was us last year. I don't think we had any. Do we have any like long shot, take a poke at them type of situations? I don't think so. I think we sucked so bad we couldn't even get them that close. Uh, I think we ate six to eggs yet last year. I ate six personally. Yeah, I have like five right now. So I'm. Yeah, I got three already. <laughs> six tags. That makes a real nice strong soup. Nice tag suit. Yeah, right one was an out of state yeah. or two, so it was yeah. really like extra. It was hearty. Extra expensive, so it tastes better. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gourmet. <laughs> yep, that Miriam's tag is uh, extra tasty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what about you then, Colby? You got one to start it off? Oh, man, I could, I could jump to a pretty funny one, I guess. Uh, same woods, uh, gosh, who knows what year it was early on. Um, we were out of the blind, and uh, I think Eli was holding the tag, holding the gun. We are kind of doing a little running and gunning a little bit back in the woods, and I was the caller, and he was the shooter. So, you know, I'm set up 30, 40 yards behind him and calling for a while, nothing going on. And I uh, turns around, and I can see a motion that he's got to take shit. <laughs> so my like, car, right? This is interesting. So uh, sure enough, he like just steps his gun against the tree and goes over five or ten yards and drops trowel, you know, thirty yards in front of me. And I'm obviously trying to try not to watch. And I'm looking around, scanning the area, and as he's trowel dropped, uh, here comes this hen walking in right between us. And it's kind of clucking away, and sure enough, right behind it, here comes a top. <laughs> and they're, they're communicating back and forth, and Eli's got no clue, and these birds, like, he must have hit himself real good because they also have no clue that a guy is 20 yards in front of him dropping a deuce. And uh, sure enough, he gets done, pulls up his pants, stands up, and golly, then they actually saw him, and they took off running. And uh, I'm just like, I got nothing to do back there but like shake my hands in the air. Like, he turns around, he's like, I thought that was you making a call back there, screwed it off <laughs> while I was taking it. I'm like, no, it wasn't me. It was actually these birds making the noise in between us. So, uh, yeah, getting caught with your pants down in the woods, that was a pretty good one. Well, I was trying to be polite, you know, turn, put my back towards everything so that nobody got the full frontal. Right. But. <laughs> That that did not end up working out in our favor that time. Yep. In the end, it was your modesty that failed you, Eli. Well, what actually made him run away was not the stand-up. It was when I realized that my gun is leaned up against the tree five yards away from me, <laughs> and I got to go get the gun so I can shoot this thing. <laughs> That's what made him run away. Is there a reason the gun wasn't next to you? Uh, yeah. Amateur. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, nobody really writes the playbook for these things. You know, you kind of have to learn as you go. Right. Right. I know. And I just... I'll never, I'll never pull that move again without taking the... <laughs> Taking the gun and putting it within arm's reach. Right. Yeah. Got to have it within arm's reach, I guess, when you're when nature calls. Yep. Hundred percent. Have to learn from the mistakes. <laughs> oh man, I I I know you've got some from uh, especially early days, a couple of years ago. A couple of good ones, maybe. With you, or are you talking about our first one? I mean, just just any of them. <laughs> I got a few. Um, probably the earliest one uh, was my first bird I ever shot. I uh, was so jacked up, and my uncle, like, would stake our tents down. Like, a hurricane would hit them, and mm -hmm. they wouldn't move at all. I mean, just ropes and stakes everywhere. And I was 10 years old, and I shoot this tom, like, 
opening day of the youth season, like 10 minutes into the season, and we were sitting over an old cornfield, and I shoot him, so I run out the back, and I, I'm flying out there trying to get to him, and I trip over a, one of the strings tied down, and there's corn stalks all over the field, and I take one right to the forehead, just <laughs> splits me open. I'm bleeding, and I get <laughs> get out there, and the turkey's <laughs> flopping around, and uh, he, he didn't go anywhere, but it's just a funny way to start the my first turkey I ever killed, and I eat a corn stalk right to the face, and I'm bleeding, and they're just <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> But That's good. that that one was th- these other ones are a little more funny, I guess. When so <clears throat> when Noah and I first started this whole before we thought we were gonna start a YouTube channel, we both went out there. This was like right at when COVID hit. We probably weren't even supposed to be hanging out type thing. Um, so Noah and I, I'm like, we never hunted together. I was like, hey, you wanna come turkey hunting with me? It's a Friday. School's canceled. So he's like, yeah, sure. So we get out there. It's like fourth or fifth season. I think it's fifth season. So it's pretty warm. It's like 70 degrees. And uh, we get up there to where the spot we always go. And they're hammering in the morning. Like four or five of them just going crazy. And we were set up on one side. And where I thought they'd come out, they didn't. So we just we get up and go to the other side of the hill, like probably 25 yards. Because we're looking down one the south side. and there. So we go to the north side. And there's this Tom out there strutting with hens. So I'm like, all right, here we go. I brought the camera with, but I left it back because I just wanted him to get his first bird. So I got the fan. We're reaping them, and we're belly crawling out there into these. It's like a ravine. Well, it's a hill, but it's, like, wavy almost where you can get in, like, ditches. So we get up to the top, and sure enough, I go like this. He just poof, struts up, starts coming right at us. And he, it was a poke. It was, like, 35 yards, and I'm like, all right, take him. And boom, just <laughs> folds him. First turkey ever. So – we get all we're jumping around and celebrating and uh we look over <laughs> we look over down the hill more and there's two more toms strutting out there so like so then we're back into hunting mode and mm-hmm. we just we basically just take his bird and kind of like toss it over it's still it's laying out in the middle of the field but kind of tucked away a little bit <laughs> and then um so then we're going after these birds and we get down all the way to the bottom of the hill totally forgot i don't even remember what we forgot something important because we went back up to get it i think it was a camera yeah so we forget this we go back up the hill no it wasn't a camera because you had the camera oh yeah i I think it was my vest or calls or something so we go back up and um there's two toms standing down where we were first set up so we're out in the middle of a bean field clear cut there's nothing between us like stick out like a sore thumb because we're on top of the hill so like a silhouette and uh, sure enough, throw the fan up. Noah's turkey's laying 40 yards from us, dead, or than a doornail. They're just coming up to beat coming it up. up. Yeah, coming up. And they see the fan, so they're coming up. They're gobbling, strutting the whole way up. And Noah's behind me. I'm, I crawled out like 10 yards in front of him with the fan. So he's behind me, nothing, just sitting there in the middle of a field filming. And <laughs> one's coming perfect straight at me, just beautiful strut. We got it all on film, gobbling his head off. And I, uh, I shoot the one to the left. Like any logical, I was doing my my good deed as a hunter because the one I shot, his foot was all messed up, so he was hobbling. So I took him out, and <laughs> Noah's filming the one that's right in front of me at 20 yards, full <laughs> strut. He goes, you missed him. It's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's dead. So we we laugh about it, and we probably could have shot that one too, but we already had two birds down for the day. So <laughs> it was a – it was a, and then that's how we decided to start uh, Buck Fever. We go, you know what? We can uh, we can start filming. We kill two birds and don't get a single one on film, but we're going to start a YouTube channel. So, <laughs> Yeah, it was like a perfectly poetic story in that we did like everything wrong you could possibly do, still came away with two turkeys, but then we also got none of them on film, <laughs> and then we decided that that was going to be what we were going to make a YouTube channel out of, was us hunting together <laughs> and just not getting anything on film. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a pretty, and this was yeah, all. That's a, good, that's a good story. It was all done by like five forty-five in the morning. Oh, it, was it was that quick, early, but it was, it was it, early. It was quick. It, it was, was like for sure six. by six thirty, seven o'clock. Yeah, it we were. Yeah. No, you, I went. It was early because I went back to work at like nine o'clock that day. Yeah, you forget how early it gets during turkey season, but it's way early. Yeah, you're not a fan of that. Not a fan. Not a fan. I would much rather be sleeping. 
Oh, Come those on. early pickups are, are brutal. And that it, it's really brutal when uh, we're not so dumb about it anymore, but a lot of our debacle stories from our younger days had to do with uh, the uh, indulging a little, little too much in the bridges the night before at the cabin until one, two o'clock in the morning and then trying to turn around and be up at like 345 wonder why you don't have your blind placed in the right spot or forget your turkey calls or <laughs> other dumb stuff going on. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of the early stories, there's a little beverage effect going on for the boys. Blame it on the refreshments. Did, they did not help our situation, I can tell you that, <laughs> with 100% confidence. <laughs> Uh, the other one I can think of that has to, or one for sure I can think of that has to deal with that is uh, the afternoon we carried a 30 rack back to the blind with oh, us. Yeah. Uh, back weighs about 80 pounds because you got a whole case in it. <laughs> and uh, just going to go enjoy the evening back in the woods and, you know, apparently not just drink a few beers, but try to drink a case of beer. And I don't know. Uh, successful in one realm and we were sitting there and had the whole uh had the whole 30 rack down and weren't apparently weren't seeing any birds and uh decided it was more, more important to go back to the cabin to uh continue our shenanigans so pick up all the cans throw them in the backpack we'll check anywhere around the blind. I'm sure these birds were probably making some noise coming in, but you know, we were probably too oblivious to the situation. And uh, sure, sure shit, unzip the blind. And if we don't have two times staring at us from 15 yards away, that <laughs> gone, you know? So yeah, that was, uh, that was a good one too. That sounds like a good time, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was a great time. I mean, we weren't, like, again, it's one of those you just laugh about and you're like, yeah, but we so stupid. <laughs> um, first of all, you shouldn't be uh, trying to pop digit beers while you're sitting with a firearm. But um, gosh, just, I mean, that was a while ago. That was back in the young buck college days, probably, is my guess, is, is the year I'm old. That sounds about right. Yeah. I got another one. I think uh, it, it doesn't involve someone that's or me and Eli, but I believe I was at my cabin with uh, my buddy Brad, and a little shout out to our other little buddy here, Little John. Oh, and boy. it happened to be we were uh, hunting on Cinco de Mayo, and John is uh, um, Colombian. What, what Colombian? Colombian descent. So he's all. Gung ho about, oh, we're hunting on Cinco de Mayo. So he freaking wears his sombrero out to the blind and brings the bottle of cube. I'm like, you are not drinking that shit while we're hunting. Like, there's no way. And he's like, oh, yeah, we got to take some pulls on that. So me and Brad, like, one each. And then every time it was our turn, we baked it. And pretty soon, Little John's got the whole liter of tequila drink. And he is like falling asleep. <laughs> stumbling around the blind and finally he's like boys i just i gotta go i gotta go back to the cabin we're like dude it's five o'clock it's prime time <laughs> and he's tail talking takes his sombrero and still blind walking back to the cabin um and me and brad shoot a bird like a half hour <laughs> <laughs> he made it back to the cabin uh, I don't know if he took a nap on the way or not, but he was definitely taking a nap when we got back there. <laughs> yep. He probably had just as much fun well, as you did that, that day. Off, I wasn't getting bothered. Yeah. He did, he did. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to carry oh, on the it. tradition. Yeah, I know. Sombreros. We could do it. I'd I have think, to get a sombrero. I think but... cowboy hats first. Yeah, but I don't think there's any cowboy holidays coming up. It can be any day. Yeah, we can make one up. Saturdays are... Yeah, one year, go to mine, right, in that, uh, right in that week three, usually. You know, first weekend of May, week three, that's a that's a great period. We've killed a lot of birds 
week three, and if you get lucky, yeah, you can get that uh, get your hunt to land on Cinco de Mayo. You might want to start a little tra- tradition there. You know, a nice little sun hat, sombrero, keeps the sun out of your eyes while you're sitting at a blind. Uh huh. Exactly. Or while you're taking a tequila nap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they call that a siesta. <laughs> siesta. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you and you and Tara usually do pretty good in that third yeah. period, that time frame. If if they're going, and then I'm, I've always been like fourth because I never was putting in for tags early enough. So <laughs> fourth was always like my sweet spot. But and now you and I both have second and third. And my dad got fourth. <laughs> yeah, I know. You'll have to tell the story of uh, when when we were all three there, and we get up on those birds in Green Lake, and uh, in the roost. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> this was like fifth, fourth season maybe. I I feel like it was late. No, because we went to Nebraska. Fifth, it was fourth season, and uh, or maybe it was six. I don't know. I don't. Know. And we're going. We got. We're at this property where we hunt, but not in this particular spot too much. And we're we're walking down because I I know where they are, or at least I thought I did, from previous hunts. And we get down there, and we're getting close. We're like hundred yards from where we want to get to, and all of a sudden, we're walking in the field and. We stop. I don't know why we stopped. Did we hear one? Did did one of them move in the tree or something? Um, or we we I, just yeah, stopped yeah, yeah, for yeah. some reason. One one flew from another from oh, one yeah. branch to another, and we all heard it, <laughs> but we couldn't tell if that was a turkey because it wasn't real loud. Yeah, like you, you could hopped. tell it was a bird, but you couldn't tell if it was a pigeon or what it was. But so then we're standing there, kind of figuring out where we're gonna go, and I look behind us and. Man, 30 yards, there's two toms roosted in a tree. I said, don't move. <laughs> so we're standing there trying to figure out how we're going to shoot him out of the tree once it's light enough because, I mean, we probably had, like, what, 10, 15 Ten minutes, minutes yeah. till light. And, we, like, they didn't even move for a while, and we, we were kind of screwed. We're just standing there in the middle of the field. And long story short, they ended up flying away. And, but if we were just smart and would have stayed back 20 yards, they would have – pitched down right in front of us into the field and we probably would have killed the both of them and been on our way within 10 minutes of the season starting but uh that's the first time i've ever had that happen where i busted them out like that and yeah. got way too close i like getting right. close but that was a little too close i guess yeah a little too close but we pushed a little too far there, that but. season's usually good for us my dad and i have doubled up twice in third and fourth season so yeah it's it's been pretty cool you were along for the I one was, yeah two years ago yeah I don't know if you want to talk about that one, that was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one was good because I think was that that must have been the first one that we filmed. Yeah, I think, yes. I think that that was the first one that we filmed, and so I was with you and Terry. Must have been, must have been opening day third of season? third season. Yeah, because I missed the first part of school. Yeah. So, and this was so that wouldn't make it a Wednesday then, right? Yeah, it was a Wednesday, and. So you guys have tags. I don't, which means I'm just dedicated cameraman, and we're just gonna be, just gonna be rolling like that. And so I, I think it took us a little while to get on them. Uh, I I think usually you know we always kind of get to the same spot, we pull in and then we get out of the vehicle, and we just kind of wait and listen, see where we hear them, and eventually just kind of figure out which direction we want to go. Because I mean you you talked about your property split, you know it it's half on one side of the road, half on the other side of the road. So you kind of got to make a decision which way you want to go, at least to start. And I don't remember that day if we started up on the hill. We started on a completely different property. Way. Oh, we, yeah. yeah. So we started on that other spot, and mm-hmm. it must have just been there was nothing. Nothing. We kind of walked around there and then came back, and then I think we eventually heard some gobbles and kind of got on them. And this was on the side of the road that we usually would not turkey hunt on. It's usually the side that you're going to be deer hunting on quite a bit but not turkey hunting on as much. Mm-hmm. And and we got over there, and there was, I, I want to say there was like four birds. Two hens, yeah. Two hens and two, and two toms. And th- they were all kind of working away from us, probably 200 yards away. And we just kind of snuck in there with, with the fans up and kind of calling at them. And somehow we got these two toms to come off of their two real live hens and just come on over and you know how they do it they're looking pretty tough <laughs> they kind of puff themselves up a little bit and they do their little run like yeah, i'm coming for you and then you know they just kind of kept working in 
and every now and then they would hang up just a little bit, but not not really that much. They'd kind of slow down and then just kind of maybe veer off a little bit, and then they'd pick it back up and come back in, and they were, like, really, really going. And we got some good footage of this. I mean, <laughs> I, I had them in there all the way in, and you and, and Terry are kind of working out, all right, you shoot this one, I'll shoot this one, whatever. And when it finally came down to crunch time, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know. If there was a miscommunication, if the birds flip flopped and somebody was goofed or something happened, but it, it was the whole countdown, you know, three, two, one, boom, both of you shoot, two birds drop down, you wait a beat, and next thing you know, <laughs> a bird pops back up, literally just pops back up. It wasn't like he just got pounded in the head and like kind of stumbled back up. It was like nothing happened. He just like flipped back up and started running and taking off. <laughs> and then. It was just a, I, I don't remember what I, I think it was like, Jake, shoot, shoot, shoot. And then it, boom. My dad hit him, hit him again. And he, he knocked him down, but he was yep. still running. So then I had to shoot him again right before he gets into the woods. Shot him on the run. Shells are flying. And my dad's like scrambling to find another one. It was just a, the, the one that I was aiming at took most of the brunt force, I think of yeah. all the BBs <laughs> and the other one just got peppered with a few. So it kind of razzed him a little bit. One of them got completely <laughs> knocked out. And then the other one, he, he got KO'd, but only for a second. And then he was a goner. He was just running away. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you got him just before he went right back into the woods, but he would have been long gone. I don't think we would have chased him down. <laughs> he had a broken wing though. So he wasn't going to go very far. Or oh, survive but, at least. Oh, you you put him down good after that. Yeah. <laughs> Back on wood. We haven't, we haven't had one pop up. Oh, so, I, I got a good pop up story. I got a good pop up story. It was a Brad though. Uh, so me and Brad, or my buddy Brad, were hunting uh, out of a blind, and Brad's notorious for like when you shoot a bird. I don't know how he does it, but he's like out of the blind in like two seconds. He, like, must dive out the window or something. He's never out the door. He somehow gets out of the blind so fast. I drop this bird, and we're like, whoa, you know, got him. And he's out the blind before I even know what happens. I'm ejecting the shell. I'm taking my time, going to unzip the back door and go out like a normal human being would. And he gets out there, and this, and he's just going to go step on its neck. And the freaking bird pops up, like, charges at Brad and he doesn't have any weapon or nothing so it charges at him and stops he tries to like drop kick it in the head as if that's going to do anything he like kicks at it and falls on his ass into the mud <laughs> meanwhile the bird gets up and starts to like run away and stops he picks up like a freaking rock and chucks it at it and I don't know what he's going to do to it either and he's like, shoot that bird. And I'm just like, finally getting myself out of the blind. Finally get another shell in, and it's still standing there and drop it. But he's covered in mud from when he tries to like kick and drop kick this thing and <laughs> like swing up and swings and misses and falls in the mud because uh, it was a plowed field. It was freaking hilarious. I, I just so, so far. So what's Brad's excuse for this whole thing? Is was this Cinco de Mayo for Brad? Was this uh, <laughs> another thirty rack debacle? This was uh, this was a uh, stone cold over in the morning. Uh, just uh, he he was getting charged by the bird, and he felt like that was his only defense. Was apparently, to try to drop. <laughs> has he been trained in any sort of martial arts, or is this just just came from a primal instinct? You know, I, I think it's a primal instinct. I, unless he's keeping something from me, I don't think he's taking any martial arts on the side that I know of, but you never know with him. Clearly. <laughs> I'm a firm believer of running out there to get them too. I don't I don't mess around because they, they tend to get up sometimes. So we're as soon as one gets hit, we're out there stomping on their – Yeah. Or getting on do. their head or grabbing them. Like even the one your brother shot this year, last year, was completely dead, but we still – I still was out there yeah. so quick. I, I just I kind of am just like ready to put another shot in them I guess because if yeah. they pop up they're not really gonna be strutting you just they're gonna <laughs> have their neck way up there I think you can get another good shot in them but I don't know it's yeah it, it's it's something because it, they'll have that the one that I shot um two years ago now God that's that sucks I should not be going years without shooting turkeys but um yeah that one. We watched him for a long time, and then even once we went out there 
and you know went and made sure he was a goner and we, we like started taking pictures with him whatever <laughs> then he starts flopping again like just the nerves come back and he's he's just kicking all over the place but yeah they they definitely tend to be a little bit tougher than you might give them credit for any other good uh or how many times have you guys like done the been sitting with somebody each have a tag and done the three two one countdown and both shoot at the same time two or three times with my dad yeah that that's a that's a fun experience uh me and eli had one of those uh a couple years back uh boy we weren't even barely we were even up at the blind i think we were moving the blind that morning we had just had it down the line another 80 yards and i'm setting the blind up getting the chairs arranged in it and he's standing outside and you can hear these birds going off like goblin and we thought they were still up in the tree and he makes like two calls to him and you can tell it's multiple birds just down and off pretty soon i'm like dude get your butt in the blind i can see them they're like sprinting in so he like jumps in the blind we zip it up he barely has time to get on the chair and like put a shell in his gun and they are like oh there's four times and they're within 20 yards of us and it, it's literally seconds later it's like all right i'm gonna take the one on the left you take the one on the right three two one boom and our season was done in less than a minute oh man <laughs> i mean the chair was not neither of our chairs were either, either warm we, we both sat down for five seconds and did a countdown and had two birds laying back <laughs> And it was nap time. But I do, I do recall another, I do recall another three, two, one countdown again with Brad. Uh, same spot where the drop kick uh, incident happened. Um, different year, obviously. And two toms are coming in with a whole line of hens, and we're like, all right, we're gonna count down three, two, one. And we still argue about this to the day. One of us shot on two instead of three, and it, whoever shot first missed. And so the other Tom is airborne and it's starting to fly. And we take like, we both swing our guns and both try taking a crack at this flying Tom. And we both miss that one as well. And we got no birds when it should have been a cake. Well, like these Toms were at 10 and we didn't get either of them. Oh man. On a three, two, one countdown. We're still arguing about who shot first, <laughs> but somebody shot at like two, two and a half. Somebody jumped the gun. Uh, and we, nothing to show for it. Well, who was it? I mean, we know, we know who it was. Maybe me, maybe him, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Man. Yeah. I, feel like I feel like you're probably a little more disciplined than that, though. <laughs> Maybe the turkey fever was taking over that. Yeah, that could have been. Could have been. I do have one more story of them popping up. That's how I lost one. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> that was an eventful morning. I've I was six for six in my life on turkeys before this morning and I ended up missing two in one day. Shooting six shells and I didn't get a single bird. But, uh, yeah, so I, I uh, did the typical reap one in with the fan. I have no idea how I missed this one. I was laying on my stomach, so maybe that was why. Shouldn't have been. No excuses. He's like 15 yards. He pops up. Pulled him away from, like, a group of, like, 15 hens late season. And uh, he comes up over the hill, and I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> Gets up, and he's running away. <laughs> so this is, like, probably 15 minutes into the season and i uh my uncle was hunting on a different property and he's like i just missed one i was like me too he's like you want to meet up at this other property he's like sure so we get there and we're walking back and strike two up right away so we sat down and he's calling calling and sure enough another one starts gobbling the two that we originally struck up uh start coming in 35 yards i'm like all right go ahead i was filming and my uncle i said shoot the first one Poof, he shoots drops it the other one Jumps like five yards, comes back, such full strut right over him. So I'm like, all right, lean back, lean back. And like an idiot, I shot him in full strut, which is okay if they're facing you and they're not 35 yards away. But I didn't want him to spook or anything. So I, I shoot and he drops. And I'm like, well, we're just, I'm freaking out. Like, let's go. And the typical let's yep, go. Yep. And 
I get like halfway out and I turn around and I'm like fist bumping my uncle and like from a distance and he, he's, like, he's like, he's up, he's up. And he just pops up, runs away and I shoot one more time, shoot another time and I take off after him through the swamp. I lose both my boots in the swamp, my rubber boots, never ended up getting the turkey and I missed two birds and shot six times in one day, all before like seven o'clock. Losing the boots, man, that's... That's the kick in the well, nuts. Well, yeah, just it was just like knee deep muck. Yep. It was bad. No. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a tough way to start a morning right there. Yeah. So <laughs> then I it was like Saturday too, and I just went home. I was done. Yeah. You got to call it after that. Our one of our our most famous turkey hunting stories doesn't even really involve turkey hunting, but um, and we've told it before i think but it, it's the nebraska trip <laughs> you know so we, we we we're doing it last year we we were both graduating from college and we were going to be starting jobs and it was like all right this is going to be like our our last hurrah and gabby's in hawaii so i'm sad and it's a whole thing and you know so we're like we're just going to nebraska we're going to go kill a miriam's it's going to be it's going to be great and so we, you know, we get all our, our monies together and, and <laughs> we get everything put into our joint account. And so we're, we, we got it all budgeted out. We're going, we're going to get the hotel, pay for the gas, everything. It's going to be great. We bought the tags, just a, a big trip. And it was, a, it was a good trip, but there was some interesting <laughs> events. I mean, we, what? I interrupt. You're... I was gonna say wife, but your your girlfriend's gone on vacation, and you got free reign to go hunting with the boys, and you're sad. That's what I was well, trying to say. To learn. That's a blessing. <laughs> That's a blessing. No, this is. I love my wife, but hey, when you're gone and you got some time to go for yourself, it's all good, buddy. It's all good. Amateur, amateur move right there. <laughs> okay, but. <laughs> I don't know if you guys Feelings are, are overrated. I don't know how much you guys are up on your geography or anything, but Nebraska really sucks compared to Hawaii. Depends how you I look mean, at it. I mean, it really <laughs> sucks because I've been there now a couple times. It sucks. It, it was beautiful. It was pretty cool. Where we yeah, were hunting, I mean, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't Hawaii. Trees but... and rocks. It wasn't a volcano. I mean, well, we also didn't pay as much as it would be to go to Hawaii. Her aunt and uncle were paying for it. Well, Only same it. difference. Would I know. I, would... Okay. Maybe in a couple a years. Room, huh? You guys had a hot tub in your hotel room or something, didn't you? Yeah, yeah we did, awesome. but I, it wasn't in the room, Colby. It wasn't one of those <laughs> hotels. It, we weren't <laughs> yeah. sharing one of those together. Okay, it was down in the lobby, and there was always a third party. that, For some reason, the janitor was in there cleaning it every single day. So yeah. I don't know if there was an outbreak of some sort. <laughs> he just wasn't telling us, but we never saw another soul in there except for the janitor. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we did share a hot tub every now and then, but it wasn't, you know, I and mean. The clothes are on, so it didn't matter. Well, like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, you know, but maybe in a couple of years, yeah, I'll back, have different back thoughts. To geography. But, but back to geography, the only geography lesson you need, need to learn is when the wife's away, it's time to go play. I uh, get right. it, but she's not, she's not my wife yet. Maybe basically, once she is, then, basically. then I'll have those feelings. <laughs> but at this point in time, it was sad. And this is a good opportunity for you to test out what the reaction is going to be to see if it's commitment worthy. <laughs> I agree. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. It what I mean, we, we were fine, but we were also like nervous. I mean, we're, we're going to be starting real jobs here. Like that's it true. was just, a, it was just a weird time. It was weird times. We also almost died. Well, that's the story. I mean, so yeah. because we're coming into town and we just like, we went off of, basically youtube videos where like the place in nebraska where everybody goes i'm not going to say it but if you google it you'll find it pretty quick <laughs> and we know that because everybody and his brother was there and they already killed all the birds that year but uh so was, we just found like the nearest town to that and found a good hotel there that looked nice and that's where we were going to go and we roll into town and it, i mean it's a dump it looks like i, I mean there's 
I don't even know how to describe it. We check into the hotel and they gave us a bag of meth just because I mean, <laughs> like it, it was just something it was, you'd see on forty eight hours. Yeah, it it was. It looked like the whole town was a junkyard. <laughs> it was scary. Every place, like the churches, were boarded up. I mean, it it was. There was a gas station with with bars on it. Yeah, it was it was a rough location, but you know it was fine. We we roll in there, and I don't think we did much of anything except unpack and then we were going to try and go scouting and so we we rolled into town unpack our stuff and start off to go scouting and we must have not been there for more than 10 minutes heading down the road towards the the piece of public and we're just driving going along and uh you know we we just have no idea what we're doing and we're just kind of shooting the breeze and next thing you know there's a guy coming at us and he decides he wants to drive in our lane instead of his. And so he just he, he kind of veers off into our lane and it wouldn't seem that out out of place or very unusual if there was a car in front of him that he was gonna try to be passing. No car in front of him. And so he just kinda keeps getting closer and then it becomes pretty apparent that he's not getting back. Like this is <laughs> where he plans on driving and <laughs> we gotta take some action here. And so Jake like slams on the brakes and then gets over into his lane. Meanwhile, this guy doesn't make any sort of move at all. He just kind of slowly keeps drifting off like our side of the road into our side of the gravel. And then we're just now parked in the middle of the road, looking at each other stunned, like what just happened. And he, we look in the rear view and he just kind of slowly starts veering back into his lane. Like nothing ever happened. So he must have taken full advantage of the hotel math because he, he was he was on something. But it, it was like we roll into this new town. We're like jacked up to be turkey hunting out of state. But there's all this other stuff going on that we're just like in a weird place mentally. And then we almost die on the, the first yeah. day. Like we're going pretty quick. It wasn't like we were just well, in town. We were out, going 60 and out there. Every, all their speed limits are way faster than yeah. like in Wisconsin. Like their highways are like 80. Right. So yeah, your side roads are 65 compared to 55. I mean, we were cruising. Yeah. You're going pretty quick there and trying to just like look out the window for birds a little bit and kind of figure out what we're doing. Look on the map. So I'm just glad that things worked out the way they did and everybody <laughs> was alert and, the the trip didn't turn out with any birds that day. I don't know that we saw any, but we we came back to the hotel. We had like I don't know fifty brats and hot dogs just in a couple of Ziploc bags that we were gonna be chowing down for the next week. And I so ate we'd all of them. <laughs> eat ourselves a couple of brats and just lay in there like I <laughs> I don't know, man. I I don't know. We just almost died. We're gonna try and kill a turkey. I don't know. It was a good experience, though. Yeah. I'd go back. <laughs> no no out-of-state turkey hunting from the last year. Yeah. But had a hard enough time killing them in the state. That's we true. used to have a hard enough time killing true. them in the state. It's not funny, but, I, but it's, it's usually our own selves getting in the way. I I don't know how many years I'm on in a row, but it's, it's quite a few. I would I would say with confidence it's been at least the last five or six years straight that I've and at least one. It's impressive. Yeah. The years more than that. Well, I'm pretty confident I'm going to complete all of the turkey slams in my lifetime. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, it's like. Four what 49 different well, birds yeah there's 49 states but then there's one at one or two or three in mexico a couple in canada yeah, just to go for all the slams because i don't think it's going to be that hard no it shouldn't be hard at all <laughs> no because it's just turkeys like you just yeah. go and shoot they're, them and then you go to the next place yeah they're pretty easy to hunt yeah i think in 10 years <laughs> i think in 10 years does the wife know uh, she's not my wife <laughs> The Osceola down in Florida is the challenge because you know you get that big old swamp and bugs, bad bugs and snakes and alligators and stuff. I don't <laughs> crocky. So if you don't like ticks, that ain't gonna be the the cats meow for you down there. No, yeah. it's not. But I was just talking to Ben about the uh, 
the Everglades in Florida because there's this dude on TikTok that uh, you've probably seen him. He just like hangs out in the Everglades at night. He just hangs out there. Oh yeah, I seen that. And he catches snakes and alligators Gator, yeah. and there's he's, all the spiders and everything. He's just chilling with he's them. Messed up in that. And we were just talking about how scary the Everglades is, but you don't have to go to the Everglades. There's a lot of great. I mean, well, Florida <laughs> Florida sucks. It's not a good place, but. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's some nice beaches and stuff there, not where the turkeys live, but I've seen some places you just pay like $5,000, you get yourself a guide, they pretty much just bring them in for you, you just got to pull the trigger and there's your grand slam. I don't think that's this, but maybe, maybe someday, who knows? who knows? You never know. I want to shoot the peacock one really bad. He looks like a cool bird. That's not getting mounted. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't know why you're so hating on that. Because that is not a turkey. It is. That's why they call it a turkey. No, it's not. It's a what are you talking about? legit looking peacock with some extra colors. Yeah, it's the coolest thing ever. It's Just a, shoot it a peacock. A, it's a it's like a rainbow turkey. It's fantastic. Uh, just shoot a peacock. They have them in Wisconsin. No, I saw them in the zoos, but... <laughs> You no. guys, you guys don't like the the turkey or the peacock looking turkey either. You know what you're talking about. To be honest, all I know is about a peacock. That's it. It's in Colby. Did you did you see that one after you dabbled into the bag they gave you at the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> do you guys both not know what I'm talking about? Not many people do because oh. nobody <laughs> thinks oh it's a cool God. bird. It's it's you need it if you want to get the world slam, which I'm gonna probably do in the next ten years, like I said, but. Let me Google it. I'll figure out which one it is, and then you two can Google it. Um, rainbow. See that you have to look up turkey. rainbow turkey. Because I'm un- oh, that ain't that's it. different. Because I'm unfamiliar <laughs> with it's the oscillated, so not the Osceola. It's in Mexico. The oscillated. Yeah. Google it. Google it once. I you got to see it. Let me see the picture of it. You it's the coolest gotta, bird ever. You just got to show them while you're plugged in. Yeah, that's gonna be real difficult. Wait, I'll I'll I mean, text them maybe. You text them. I don't know. It's it's the coolest bird ever. It's got like a blue and orange head with a bunch of like warts on it or something. And then his feathers are all blue and orange. I didn't think it was real for the longest time, but he's real. He lives down there in Mexico somewhere and I I would absolutely love to go and shoot one of those things. It's really not that cool. It's so cool. The fact that that thing's a turkey, it's so I'm impressive. Take my five grand and run a moose on it or something instead of some rainbow turkey. It's not oh. even rainbow. It's just got a tint well, of blue to it. Tint of blue? What are you talking about? Do you see it? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, That's it's cool. cool. There's, probably, right. there's probably way more people that have shot a moose than shot one of those things. Because they're smart with their money. No, 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 no. They just don't know how cool it is. I, you could Google it because the all the people who complete the World Slam are on a list, and there's not many of them. It's not many of them. After you spend five grand on that Florida turkey, I would say then you got to go after the rainbow. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I plan to. I'm more over the rainbow. Yep. If I you, just if you pay for my hunt, I'll come. That's ridiculous. I don't know why you don't want to do that. Because, no, what's going to happen is 10 years from now, I'm going to be on the cover of all the magazines. I'm this world-traveled turkey hunter, killed all the turkeys you could ever kill, and then you're just going to be jealous. You're going to be like, why didn't I go with? I could have been right there with them. Where do you think I'll be? I don't know. That's You don't have another plan. You're not killing, like, all the deer in the woods or anything. You I just might. don't. You just refuse to go kill this turkey. And well, Colby's moose hunting. Maybe I'll be with Colby. You know, you go kill a moose in every state. Yeah, Good luck. You can't. Good luck. Thirty. Oh. Thirty years. Okay, so you'll be what? Thirty-one. You don't think you'll have kids and a family? Good luck traveling the world. Yeah, but like they said, you you have to just not care about them. Just abandon them and just go do your own thing. <laughs> that was the advice that I heard from you guys. Something like that. <laughs> just abandon your family. Yeah. They'll understand. And just do your own thing. 
people don't understand, they might get over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You guys have any other uh any other crazy stories? I mean, I don't know. It's hard to hard to follow up the rainbow peacock. Well, turkey. that's a future story. That's <laughs> it. We'll we'll look back in a couple of years and we'll laugh about that one. Down southwestern. All kinds of ones. That we... Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, southwestern Wisconsin, where we uh, down by where we deer hunt. Uh, in down in the valley, it's actually pretty awesome because you get a calm morning down there, and you can hear literally twenty, thirty turkeys gobbling. One of them fires off, and then they just kind of go all the way down the valley, and you can. Just hear it. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool experience. Well, we're down there, and you know, we we get set up right away in the morning, and we have a couple toms that are roosted. They had to be right above us. Well, you know, forty-five minutes into the day, and we don't hear anything, but we can see birds on the other side of this valley, which is in uh, managed forest law, so we can go hunt over there. We talk about it a little bit and decide, oh, let's go make the move. We go over. You know, we creep up into the woods, look back over, and you can. we were set up in a blind to start, right in front of the blind. There's those two toms that, that were roosted right up above us. So we're sitting over there, and dang it, you know, these other birds are nowhere to be found. Make the jump back across the road to the blind, Thinking we could maybe pull those toms back out of the woods. Cross. The birds across the road again. So I don't know how many times we ended up jumping back and forth that day. But we spent more time doing that than we did hunting, I think. And we saw a ton of them. Um, but we're never in the right spot. Was that the same day that the logging road thing happened? And it's the same day with the logging road debacle too. So one of the times we we jump across the road and I don't know what which trip this was, but we walk up into the woods and there's a logging road that parallels the field. We're walking in there and talking about oh, where were they? You know, think think they were right around here when when we saw them go in. We we're just standing there out in the middle of the wide open. Can hear something up the hill from us and a couple sticks are cracking can hear leaves rustling and like ah probably a deer keep standing there and look up four times walking right in a line <laughs> straight up above us i don't know why we didn't have do did we have a gun in our hands or were those sitting on the ground or something well, i don't know why we didn't just grab them and shoot but they were just a little maybe slightly out of range but yeah we're standing there in the middle of the logging road you know you're hearing this the sticks crack and leaves crumble and you know maybe hey get some cover duck down get down on a knee get behind a bush no let's just continue to stand straight up two six foot two guys right in the middle of the logging road and wait for them to pop out no four times and there we are standing pretty much naked right in the middle of the logging road while they look at us and then go searching up the hill you know had we jumped five feet over into some brush and got down on a knee probably would have had two lay in there but just you know <laughs> mm -hmm. man yeah that, that sums it up <laughs> yeah, it's, there's countless times of Got the blind in one place and you're you're chasing birds that you see, saw a couple hundred yards away and you go reset up over there and then you look back where your blind originally was and then there's one strutting out there a half hour later you know i would probably can count on both hands the amount of times that that that's happened it's just you know you're just shaking your head and going are you kidding gotta be aggressive uh-huh live and die by that yeah i don't want to uh, one cool success story that is kind of crazy is I was with Brad uh, back in our hometown hunting and we had a blind set and we weren't 
Well, same deal. Kind of saw some birds on the opposite side of the field all morning and decided mid-morning nothing's going on. You know, it's 10, 11 o'clock, maybe noon, something like that. And we're going to take the blind and go put it on the opposite side of the field while it's 75 degrees out. We're kind of lazy, so we're like, ah, let's just drive the truck down here, load it up in the back of the truck, and we're hunting an apple orchard. And so we throw the blind in the truck, and I drive up into the orchard a little bit just to, like, cover the truck up uh, with the trees. And I just pick a random road to drive down. When we get down to the end of the road, I'm like, or end of the row, and I'm like, dude, is that a, there's a little hill cresting over. You can just see the, the tips of what looks like a turkey fan. And I stop the truck, and I'm like, dude, is that a, is that a Tom fanned out? Yeah, dude, it is. I'm like, what should I do? Well, freaking get your gun. <laughs> so I open my truck door. The truck is still running. Open my back door. Get the shotgun out. Put some shells in it. Take like five steps in front of the truck. Make some random mouth call. I can barely see. I make some mouth call. All of a sudden I see his head pop up. Shoot, done. Game over. Turkey take fill. Truck is <laughs> truck is still running in Brad Sitton's passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Never had to set never had to reset the blind. Yeah. That's the way to go. That was probably yeah. the most crazy success story I had. <sighs> yeah, you've had a couple other pretty cool ones in the apple orchard. Not like step out of the truck and shoot it, but just cool cool stalks where you crawling down the you know edge of the tall grass and kind of pop up yep, and ambush. that's been a good little spot uh haven't hunted there in a couple of years uh started getting more pressure and other people were getting permission in there too and just wasn't yep. seeing as many birds but yeah we shot quite a few birds out of there over the years it was a good little spot yeah COVID, the COVID year was pretty awesome. That was that was a year. I took Ty out for the youth hunt. Had called four times in for him. He shot and um, ended up hitting the net that goes across the window. I kind of had it folded over, so he shot through where I had it folded over and hit the bird. You could see it kind of like tip over a little bit and then immediately got back up and and started running and then i had week one so i went out same spot i had him and had those toms same probably the same toms roosted well walking out there and i decided i got out there a little bit later um with one of my buddies and decided because I saw a couple on the ground to kind of cut the corner of this this field and use the L, the terrain to my advantage, and so I kind of crouched down, pop up over the train. While I didn't look, there were still two birds up in the tree, so they see me. They take off flying down the hill. I see one other bird take off, flies down the hill, and I figure that the fourth one just ran back in and it took off with them. So I sit there for a little bit and stand up no fourth one is still there like 40 yards away he runs away well we punted on that spot went down to my buddy's his his parents have a farm it's about i don't know 30 minutes from my house and we just went and set up a blind it's like 12 45 and we're setting it up and i'm like well why don't i just throw out a call and see what happens quick and First call, get one fired up, and ended up kind of working it for for a while. He goes quiet, so we just went quiet. And then you'd hear him gobble, trying to locate us. We'd yelp a little bit. We're just working him, working him, and we thought that he kind of was down in the valley, and we figured, well, it's first season. He's probably with hens. We gave it a little longer. We're just about to get out, and I called one last time, and he gobbled and stuck his head out in the field so i dumped him so now we're at a lot of action week two that same buddy had a tag so we went out to the farm that morning i called two toms in for him he'd shot one 
week three, my other buddy has a tag. So I went out and called for him. He shot one. It was like the first four weeks of the season. I called birds in or, you know, shot them myself. It was, that was an awesome year. Jeez. Yeah. That, that was a fun year. That's when we killed ours. Uh-huh. And I killed another one that year too. Not a bad year for us. Turns out if you don't have to go to school or work, you can actually be pretty successful out mm-hmm. in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. So one thing that we're trying to do potentially maybe this year, if the right sort of combination of things comes together, is maybe try and shoot one with a bow. Is that something you guys have ever experimented with? I've taken it, but at the end of the day, I like I don't take a bunch of vacation really for turkeys and pretty much just go on the weekend or – you know, I'll go after work once in a while. I used to go before work when I had a little more flexibility. Um, but it's just easier to take the thunder stick out. I'm not saying I wouldn't shoot one with the bow. I think it would be awesome, but I just don't. Like, if I'm going, I'd, I usually just take the gun. Same here. I'm not usually taking much for extra vacation. Time usually a day or two or a day and a half on a weekend and off the odds with the uh, with the gun. I think I have taken my bow a few times, but it's been quite a while since I took my bow out. I mean, I don't plan on taking too much extra time either. I just am not always going to make the best decisions. I I might just take a bow because I might want to. This would have to be if we already have killed one. I think if I kill one third or fourth season, then I might try and shoot one fifth or sixth with a uh, a bow. Because at that point, I got my bird, you know. We'll see. I'm usually out for vengeance, so. Yeah, uh, you like to kill a bunch of them, but if I can get any on this, uh, that permission spot that I'm trying to work, might be able to shoot one with a bow. I got a tag for, um, must be the sixth period, the last one, or is it the fifth one, the last one? Whichever one's sixth. the last one, I, I got I got a tag for that one because that one sold out pretty fast. Um, but, yeah, that one. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I, I think I'm the only one who still has trail cameras up right now, so I don't think anybody else is probably seeing birds. We we always have them up way early, and we haven't seen any on our uh, southwest Wisconsin property, but the, the permission spot that I'm trying for, there's a Tom, and we saw him when we were trying <laughs> to shed hunt out there. Yeah. We got within 10 <laughs> yards of him, so th- something could potentially come together there. I actually... So on our trail cameras in our property in in Southwest Wisconsin, not far from you guys, I woke up Saturday morning at like 7.15, check my phone to see what time it is. I'm trying to sleep in a lot past 7.15, check my phone. I see we have trail camera notifications. There's a bear on our trail camera there. There's a bear. You didn't tell me that. Yeah. So I'm, so I, I'm like stoked because it's not the most uncommon thing ever. There's been bears known to be in that area every now and then, but like, it's not, it's not a normal thing and we've never seen it before. So I'm like freaking out, but I don't want to, I don't want to like wake myself up yet. Cause I'm still so tired. So I, I just want to go back to bed. I'm like, I know it's there. It'll be there when I get up in an hour or two, I'll check it. And I'm having a hard time falling back asleep now. Cause I'm so excited. And so I finally do fall back asleep get up at like 8 30 and i'm like all right i can't fight it anymore i gotta go take a look so i get on my phone get on the app start looking at the pictures raccoon <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a bear we, uh... never was a bear <laughs> that's why i never heard about it uh, yeah yeah well the thing is like on our on our spy point <laughs> app it it'll send you like a almost like a thumbnail of what the picture is but if it knows what the animal is, it like zooms in on it pretty tight. So the raccoon was just situated in such a way that he was really looking bearish. It was a cub. He no, he looked big too. He I would have said three, four hundred pounder. Jeez. He, this was a big bear. Were you and, drinking the and night before? No, I don't think so. And it yeah, turned out to be a raccoon. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting there for an hour while I was sleeping and then <laughs> Then kind of sucked, but oh, <laughs> you guys don't have any any cameras out yet to know if the if the birds are flocking yet, do you? 
are bears still hibernating or have they woken up now? I don't know. Probably See, still sleeping. Well, we were talking about this at work today. They're still asleep. We were talking about this at work, though, and one of the guys was saying that when he was bear hunting, he must have learned a whole bunch of facts from the guide or whatever, and who knows if any of them are true, but he was saying that bears don't necessarily care about the temperature to hibernate. They just, like, they just know when they, they eat enough, their metabolism just slows down, and they just hibernate. Could be any time. Doesn't have to just be the winter. Somebody Google it. I don't know. This is just what he told me today. It's just funny that it was talked about. But you could be right, Eli. They're probably <laughs> still sleeping. It wasn't on my mind, though. I, I saw him. I understand. We're all talking about debacles and, and you know, the mistakes that, that we've made. It's a safe place to share a story like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, at least I didn't, like, spread the word about it or anything before double-checking. Right. I just kept it to myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Call the neighbors up. <laughs> yeah. There's a bear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No. No, no bear. Would have been cool, though. Would have been cool. That's all I'm saying. It would have been. Uh, what's the season look like, boys? Who, who's, uh... What tags and what weeks and the head? Two, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah. We both drew for two, and then um, we got on on whatever day that was, right at nine forty-five to get in the waiting line, and then ten o'clock rolls around. We both picked up three, and I have since picked up four. Same. And I I picked up six for um, zone two for by work in case I get that but five and six will be there for a while we'll be yeah, able to get a bunch of tags three, for those if we want like for yeah for zone three twenty thousand. 20,000 so, yeah from the second period on we'll be out there I tend to pick up doubles for five and six too so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I usually always carry two what about you guys a week uh week two and then I think I got a double tag for week four and then also five six just because uh, the zone I live in also is a zone. It stretches all the way to where my cabin is. So um, Perfect. I can hunt locally. I can hunt up at my cabin. It gives, gives me a lot of flexibility for different weekends and what. And I know I want to take my six-year-old son up to my cabin for uh, probably that week four when I got double tags. So maybe try to shoot one up there and still have a tag in the pocket for back here. Or, you know, if we go up there for the weekend and you shoot one early, it, it doesn't end your weekend i can stick around and keep hunting and maybe have a crack at a second one so right yep uh potentially the youth hunt if we can get back from basketball in time and then i have week two uh ty has week three and then like i said i haven't purchased any bonus tags yet because i don't know I don't know if I'll be able to make it happen with my schedule, but um, it's looking like week week six is a a possibility. So those tags are usually plentiful if I decide that I want to pull the trigger on that. Well, I hope the Buck Fever crew can just drop like ten of them this year. I mean, last year sucked so much. Mm -hmm. We tried harder than we've ever tried just to come up with. Well, we get, we got one for Ben, but <laughs> I mean, we we tried hard enough to get like thirty. Yeah, probably. Well, I'm sure. So I've never tried to film turkey hunting before. I don't know if you've done any of that yet, Pat, or not. But I'm sure the way that we started our turkey career and the amount of screw ups we had, I'm. I can say with confidence that it's 50-50 <laughs> whether or not we drop one or have another debacle to share on another episode. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know how we'll do it. It's it'll be an interesting thing. You know, there's enough of us now. We'll have to kind of see how it goes. Maybe we could go on a week by week basis. So, you know, everybody films, you know, during second period and then when it's done we'll have a second period episode and whatever happens during that time maybe or maybe we'll go on a 
bird by bird or a debacle by debacle basis. I don't know. We'll we'll have to <laughs> game plan that a little bit. But either way, I think I think people might rather see the the chaos maybe even more than a successful hunt. And we certainly could provide that for the fans at home. I, we we have enough experience. I think we can make it happen. Just as long as that beep button is ready to go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Yep. I... Well versed on debacles, with experience there. I'm sure we can offer some uh, uh, good entertainment that way. Hundred percent. Yeah. I'm jacked up for turkey hunt. I've you know, I've killed some birds the last couple of years, but I haven't been uh, all super gung ho about it. I've been I usually focused a lot on fishing in the spring and back on some of the walleye tournaments that i'm doing this year and hoping to spend some more time in the woods uh maybe taking my kids a little bit but pretty jacked up to get out of the woods this this spring uh all the snow and weather we've been getting lately has kind of put a damper on that excitement because it just doesn't want to turn the page to spring i mean it's crazy mm-hmm. but uh hopefully soon enough we'll it'll turn the page into some actual spring weather and Spring's such a great time to just be out in the woods, and the turkey gobble in the spring is just one of the most magical sounds you can hear in the being an outdoorsman. So super excited to get after it. And pretty cool that we all got tagged too to be able to share that camaraderie, whether it's the guy you're sitting with or you know through group texts and whatnot. A little turkey camp action that'll be fun. Yeah, I agree 100. percent Now that they're like kind of ready to to go a little bit and you see them out in field strutting when you're driving around that's a different Mm -hmm. thing because i would see them like there's certain spots where you know every time you drive by there's going to be birds out there and you you see them in the winter and they're just kind of doing their thing but they're not like strutting or anything and now you drive by and that flock of 100 birds that you didn't know what from what now all of a sudden there's like 15 strutters that are all (laughs) just puffed up big as can be and just doing their thing it's like okay yep it's time we're we're getting pumped up for this thing now Mm -hmm. and i got uh i got a real sore shoulder from shooting my gun i shot it i think i shot it 12 times um just because that'll be the next that'll be the next video that's coming out um monday following this podcast episode um, it, I, it's just going to be trying to, trying to figure out, cause I don't know if you guys have any experience with this. We could maybe touch on this topic real quick. Um, just before we wrap up leading into this video coming out, but one of the hottest debates in turkey hunting right now, and you see it all over like the Facebook groups and whatever is what kind of a, a turkey load you should be shooting. And pretty much everybody tells you like, you got to shoot the TSS, you got to shoot the TSS nine shot, you know, whatever. And it's like 70 bucks for a box of five. (laughs) And, you know, it's one of those things. We've never used it. And we've always killed birds with, you know, a $20 box of 10. And so I was taking a look at it. I was like, well, you know, all these people in these Facebook groups, they're still asking the question, like, I don't know which load I should be shooting, whatever. And everybody says TSS. And then they're like, well, I don't want to go out and buy that. And nobody ever answers them. Like, if you don't want to buy the $70 box of five, which one is the $20 box of 10 that you should be shooting? Cause there's still plenty of those out there. And so we, we had to make a video on it and naturally I had to shoot it at multiple distances <laughs> to, you know, kind of verify how far it was going to go. So I shot 20 and then 35 and then 50. And by the time I got done with the whole thing, I didn't even want to pull the trigger anymore. Cause it just hurt so bad, but um, no. So, so what do you guys, what do you guys shoot for Turkey load? Are you buying into the TSS thing? Do you go cheaper? I I don't know. I I always shoot Winchester. What is it? Um, can't remember what what it is. I shoot Winchester Winchester Longbeard XR, and I have had phenomenal with it. I, 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 and that that's the thing about these turkey loads is they can shoot great out of my, my gun and. It, find out what is the best for your gun or your choke but i used to shoot some like remington nitro turkeys that's like some real cheap stuff um some federal stuff and then 
this Winchester Longbeard XR five shot, I have had tremendous luck with. That's the stuff I took those two birds at like 55, 60 yards with the one year. Um, I like it so much. I think I have like 10 boxes of it. So I'm not switching to TSS anytime soon. During this ammo shortage the last couple of years, when I found it, I bought it. So I've got like 10 boxes. I probably have a lifetime of Longbeard XR shells to shoot. So I'm not switching anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, so that was one of them. Uh, there was, you know, every time you go into Fleet Farm or wherever to buy ammo, there's going to be two different kinds of Winchester. There's the Longbeard XR, and then there's the Double X. And the Double X is like another 100 feet per second that it shoots faster. So maybe you would be thinking, like, that's the one to go with or whatever. So I shot both of those, and I shot a Federal Premium, uh, not the Federal Premium TSS, um, and then the Remington Nitro Turkey. That stuff is the cheapest. Um, I, yeah, it, it was okay. I mean, like at 20 yards, 35 yards, it's going to kill him dead. Like mm -hmm. no problem, but it's not, not a super impressive load. Um, federal premium is like the only that that's like my go-to for rifles. Um, it's just like about as good as it's going to get. I wasn't super impressed with this Turkey load from them. It wasn't like anything special by any means. Um, in the Winchester Longbeard XR, I would declare as the definite winner. That one, I think, was the most consistent, best pattern, out to the longest range. That's that's going to be the one that will be in my gun um, opening day for sure. And I'm sure the TSS is – shot. What's up? Shot size. So these were all four shot because I just had a couple boxes already of four shot. And so I wanted to keep it consistent just for the testing, whatever. And then it kind of dawned on me afterwards, like that's probably too low. It, I'd rather have more pellets, I think, because I mean, it's you know, I've shot them with up to six shot. And it I think the first one I shot was six shot. And mm -mm. it's still I'm pretty sure it was. No, you're using my gun. It had three and a half inch four shot in it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but maybe then the second one was because I know I've killed one of them with six shot, and I, I don't know. Five's probably the magic number, but the TSS is all nine. So it's like it, it's trap I, load. I, yeah, I don't know that it necessarily matters all that much. I think any of them are probably going to kill them just fine. I think four is too low. I, I would probably go to five at least. There's no way I'm paying seventy dollars for a box of ammo to shoot a, a bird. I'm just sorry. <laughs> Not when I got other stuff for under twenty bucks it works. So, so I won't be switching anytime. No, I mean I, I'm sure it's great stuff. I I don't really have any doubt about that. It's an interesting debate though because people will say you know well, you know yeah maybe you can kill them with whatever and and you could see say the same argument like. I've killed a deer with a Matthews Genesis bow. So if that's good enough and way cheaper, then why don't you shoot them with the Matthews Genesis? Why do you go out and buy the latest and greatest bow every year? Why, you know, you spend all the extra money on the latest and greatest of other stuff. Or if you can kill a deer in, you know, Redhead from Cabela's, that's a quarter of the price of First Light. Why do you go out and buy all the First Light then? And spend all that extra money, and then you don't want to buy the box of shells. So I, it's an interesting debate because I'm right there with you. Like I, the Longbeard XR is totally fine. I don't see any reason to be paying all that extra to be shooting the TSS. But it is an interesting debate when you kind of think about some of those other things. Like, oh yeah, sometimes I'm perfectly fine with spending hundreds <laughs> extra for better technology, and yet when it comes to this box of ammo, I just refuse. So it, it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not convinced. Certainly, certainly guilty of spending a lot of money on on hunting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It'd be interesting to kind of compare the two of them, and I thought about that, but then it would require me to go out and buy a seventy dollars box of ammo, and yeah, I didn't didn't want it. to do that. It's not in the budget, but yeah, I don't know anything else, guys, to touch on here this episode. Just good luck to everybody who's getting out there. Mm -hmm. Should be a, a 
fun time. Turkey season is always exciting and should be a lot of action. And, you know, it's a good way to just the gap between the end of deer season and the start of deer season. Colby, got anything? Absolutely, yeah, just great. and hunt and share good times with friends. I mean, that's one of the best things about turkey hunting. It's more relaxed. A lot of times you're sharing a, a blind or a hunt together. And uh, time to, we'll do some whitetail scouting, I'm sure, in between two. It's a good time to still be out in the woods and, and keep your eye out for all that white and stuff we talk about as well. So just great to get back out in the woods again after a couple months off of staying in the house with all the winter stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, turkey hunting is always one of those things where I always look forward to it so much, and then we get into it, and if we're getting our butts kicked, it's like you just want it to be over. But if you're, <laughs> you if just you're, don't like getting up early. Well, that part does suck. Yeah, but I mean, if you're just not, if they're just beating you every single time, it's like, man, I, I, yeah, I got other stuff I could be doing <laughs> on Saturdays. But if you're like having any amount of success or even like getting remotely close to them, it. It's so much fun. Hard to beat it. So much fun. Yeah, it's a good time. But, yeah, we'll we'll see how how the season ends up going here and what kind of content we'll have out there. I mean, maybe we'll have no debacles and no turkeys and we'll be just pretty uh, pretty boring here. But I think I, I would think with the group we've got, there will be a plethora of, <laughs> of each. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We should have a lot of good stuff coming out here. we got a couple weeks yet, but... Like Eli said, yeah, good luck to everybody that's going to be out there and, and getting ready for it now. And um, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, Buck Fever Outdoors, so that you can see all this content when it eventually does come out. Um, if you're interested in any of our merch or reading any of our articles or anything like that, uh, you can find all that stuff at buckfeveroutdoors.com. Um, everything's there and all of our videos you can get to from there as well. Um, so go and check that out if you haven't. And uh, thank you, Colby and Eli, for for joining us again. I know it's tough with schedule-wise and everything, but we made it happen, and it was a lot of fun. Heard a lot of good stories. Mm -hmm. Good time, guys. Thanks for listening, everyone. <clears throat> yep, absolutely. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.